The engagement matrix is a useful chart if you want to visualize broad patterns of product engagement. This four quadrant view shows you your events mapped by the frequency at which they are triggered and the proportion of users who trigger them. Here's how it works. Let's say I'm a product manager at a music streaming service called Amplitunes. I'm just starting out exploring my product engagement data, and I want to know which features users engaged with most and least, so I can figure out how to allocate my resources. With Engagement Matrix, you can select up to 20 individual events that you're interested in, or you can take a more exploratory approach by choosing an amplitude default that queries over multiple events. I'm interested in seeing the events that users do and don't engage with. I can do this by choosing top and bottom global events. This surfaces the top 50 and bottom 50 events by event volume at the time of query. Now, as with any other amplitude chart, you can choose to change the date range and time interval of your visualization. By default, the chart shows you your results as a percentage of your monthly active users, or MAU, on the x-axis. Depending on your product usage, it might make sense to view this as a percentage of your daily active users or weekly active users. You can make this change by choosing the appropriate time interval on your chart. For my analysis, I'll stick to looking at percent monthly active users over the last 12 months. In the metrics module, you can make more adjustments to how your engagement matrix is computed. Here, you can toggle between two metrics to show on your chart's y-axis. Average times performed is the average number of times an event displayed on the engagement matrix was fired per time interval. And average days performed is the average number of days an event was fired per time interval, in this case, a month. This option determines how the quadrants of the engagement matrix are defined, whether by median or average. If median is selected, the vertical line shows you the median percentage of monthly active users that triggered each event during the last 12 months. The horizontal line shows you the median frequency with which each event was triggered. This is calculated by taking the median of all the individual frequencies of each event. Toggling from median to average simply changes the quadrant line to reflect averages instead of medians. The final adjustment you can make is to toggle the axes of the matrix from a linear scale to a log scale. This switch may make sense depending on the nature of your data. A logarithmic scale is useful when you want to visualize data with a very wide range of values in a compact way. I don't have this issue with Amplitunes, so I'll stick to a linear scale. In the segmentation module, you can define a specific segment to analyze or choose from a saved cohort. Now to start out, I want to look at this data for all of my users, so I won't add any segments here. Now let's look at the chart. First, let's zoom in on a critical event in our product, play, song, or video. Our engagement matrix shows that over the last 12 months, 86% of my monthly active users triggered play, song, or video, and the event was triggered an average of 51 times per month. Both of these values are well above the median percentage MAU and median frequency values, landing in the top right quadrant of the engagement matrix. At a high level, this looks like a good sign. It means that my product's critical event, play, song, or video, has a relatively high frequency and breadth of engagement. This is important because playing media signals an important value exchange between the user and the business. By contrast, only around 20% of my monthly active users triggered the join community event, and the event was performed just around four times a month. Both of these values are below the median percent MAU and the median frequency value, landing in the bottom left corner of the engagement matrix. Knowing broadly what each quadrant in the engagement matrix means can help you make sense of your product's engagement patterns. Events in the top right corner, like play, song, or video, are triggered with high frequency by a large proportion of users. 
These are likely core features or actions in your product. Events in the top left corner, like share song or video, are triggered with high frequency by a small proportion of users. These could represent features that a small subset of your users find a lot of value in. If you're trying to increase overall product engagement, it might be worth investigating whether you can surface these features better so more people use them. Events in the bottom right corner, like play from push notification, are triggered with low frequency by a large proportion of users. These are probably events that are part of one-time or infrequent flows, like an onboarding sequence or a profile setup. But it's worth investigating whether there are any events you see here that are surprising. There may be core features you need to focus on improving stickiness for. Events in the bottom left corner, like join community, are events performed with low frequency by a small proportion of users. These events may represent features you have to deprecate or opportunities for further exploration and improvement. Remember that the engagement matrix is a good starting point for developing hypotheses. Going back to our scenario, if I was thinking about what Amplitune's features to deprioritize or even deprecate in the future, the community feature might be a place to continue my investigation. I might hypothesize that because engagement values are so low, users aren't getting much value out of this feature and it's not worth investing resources into. But before making that decision, I'd make sure to validate my hypothesis with other analyses, user interviews, or A-B testing. On the other hand, a small proportion of users seem to be sharing content at a relatively high frequency. I'd be interested in investigating whether these users retain long-term and how they navigate through the product. With more information, I might even decide to make product changes to encourage more users to engage with the sharing feature.